was popping, was popping, was popping. Welcome, Nikki and Moose. I'm Nikki. That's Moose. What's up, Moose? What up, y'all? And listen, we have. If you were a day one, you've probably seen this man on our show. But if you are a day, I don't know, 744, you may not have seen him just yet. But he made a huge transition to literally interviewing everybody in the world for somebody else to now having his own podcast. It seems like he's still interviewing the world, but it's more ownership for himself. I call him the king of Philly because he knows everybody, right? Right. But, Moose, how do you feel about who we are going to be talking to? Some of the best stories. I'm talking about that, that episode we did on the Facebook show. I'm talking about some really dope stories of people that we grew up idolizing. So to have those stories live and direct from the man, is, that's pretty dope. Listen, we're talking about Q, Quincy, Harris. But let's get into this intro. Two kids from Queens, cut from a different cloth. Now, joining forces, helping you to elevate your personal brand. Yeah, I'm talking about Nikki and Moose, bringing you a never-before-seen perspective into the mindset, the mentality, the behaviors, the driving force, but more importantly, the stories behind the people and brands that you know and love the most. So you already know, I gotta do the review of the week. Hey. All right, I did good last week. Hopefully, I could do good this week, but this is a long one, so I'm probably going to mess it up. This one comes from that person, and it says, class in session. (laughs) Class in session. I got put on this show after ET coaching calls and Moose talking. I'm glad I did, because Nikki is hilarious. Hold on. (laughs) Oh, hilarious. You know right? <laughs> Nikki and Moose have very intellectual conversations that stimulate the mind and have a positive influence on your character, helping you on your way to success. Thanks again for what y'all do. Hey! Love it. Shout out to everybody who le- leaves us a review. Go leave us a review. We read them all. We appreciate it. We highlight it every week. But... Let's get into our guest. You Hello, see who man. it is. Or What's going for, on? For all our listeners, we had just brought in Quincy Harris. I mean, Thank you all. Listen. Thank you all for being. Y'all so patient with me. I just, I want to say that publicly. Thank you all. Listen, his, his so mic is working. He, yes, for all my right. YouTube people, you see him very clearly. His bald head is shiny. You know me? I see you. I'm, with you, on, man. I'm just I'm just a kid from Queens. You know nah, what I'm nah, saying? Nah, hey. nah, 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 can't, can't. Nah, can't even say that. That's a lie. That's a lie. Bro, that intro, y'all intro is fire. That's a Appreciate man. It. Appreciate that's, it. That, that's hard. The anthem. Like, so. we're, trying, we're just that's trying dope. to catch up to you. That's all we're trying to do. Uh, we're trying to catch up to you. But look, stop. for the yeah. two people that weren't a day one and who don't know who you are, which I don't know who wouldn't, Give a quick intro to the people. Uh, Quincy, QDZ, as people call me. Uh, Harris, uh, radio, TV. I've done radio and TV here in Philly, in LA. Uh, left TV to do my own thing and doing podcasts and doing other uh, things in media. I've been doing media since I was 18 years old. I'm now blah, 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 years old. Ooh, so. wait, wait, wait. <laughs> yeah. I, I love it. <laughs> no, I'm yeah, not no, no, I'm, kidding. I'm, kidding. I'm, kidding. I'm I'm not one of those Cold. people. Yeah, I've been doing I since I'm 42 now. I just turned 42. I can't believe I'm saying I'm 42. I never thought I would be 42. Like 42? What are you talking about? So since I was 18, so more than half my life I've been doing uh media, whether it's in front of the camera, producing um, you know, movies, like all types of stuff. So yeah. I love it. I love it. So we're going to do this show a little bit different, okay? We're going right. to really have a conversation because what Q has done is a whole transition that needs to really be broken down from 
being on radio and a whole TV show, like on Fox and everything, to now like true ownership of his own content. And there was something that happened recently that we're going to get into as far as Joe Budden and the Patreon situation, what that means about, you know, for content creators. But uh, Moose, what I do want you to do is kind of set the tone of how we're going with this and we're just going to go have a conversation. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I think for a lot of our listeners, man, who are, you know, people still working a nine to five, looking to transition into entrepreneurship, people who still have one foot, you know, in both and looking to to go full time, they're doing it, you know, in the middle of both. So I think this is a great time for us to really have that dialogue, especially for you having made that jump pretty recent. What would you say? Last, I don't know, um, within six months? I- yeah, yeah, last six months. Yeah, it was yeah. like October. Yep. Wow. Yeah, so for you having made that jump, I think it'll be cool to just kind of start with, you know, just that story, how maybe you would have set yourself up or what you were thinking as like, you know what, screw it, I'm making a jump and going for it. You know, I think yeah. that would be a great place to start and, and get the dialogue rolling around that. Yeah, I think, I mean, for me, I've always felt like, uh Like I've always worked for somebody and I I always felt like I was fighting to put my ideas out. Right. And whether that's like, yo, I think this song is a hit song and in radio is like, well, we got to wait until it's a hit song. Right. Until everybody else is playing it. Right. Um, And, you know, doing, you know, things in L.A., you know, sometimes it was, you know, you know, I was working under a system. So it's like I would do stuff on my own, but didn't have the, you know, the engine behind me to really like propel my independent things that I was doing. Um, Then coming back to Philly, doing radio, it was was the same thing. I kept hitting my head everywhere I went. Like, yo, I want to do this. What y'all think? And it was like, yeah. And then I knew I was right. And then I would get proven right every time. So with this last one, um, I was working at the TV station. I've been at the TV station since like 2013. And then they they, um, offered me my own TV show in 2016. And then 2020 came, and of course, 2020 was a crazy time, and I started doing my show from home. So, you know, I had little equipment because, again, it was a lot of things that I would do outside of the television station, like, yo, hey, guys, I need a camera, a cameraman. And they'd be like, hmm, a camera person. Hey, can I get a camera person for this? No, we got to go take this three-alarm fire. All right, so what I would do was I had my own camera. Okay. I might have to do two interviews. Hey, Nikki, what interview? What mic should I get? Nikki be like, no, you need to get the three thousand dollar mic. I'm like, Excuse yo, me? <laughs> no, that's not the only. Yeah, that's what we're not dollars. gonna do. I didn't tell you to get the three thousand dollar one. What I did <laughs> do is tell you to get like probably a seven hundred, eight hundred dollar yeah. setup and say yep. you got it because yep. you did. So no, we're not gonna paint this narrative that I get you the three thousand dollar one. No, but you're right. You're right. It, it worked it was, out, didn't it? It worked out. No, it definitely, it definitely worked out. And so I'm getting all this equipment, and I'm doing this stuff for my job. And I'm like, I'm doing, I'm doing. I, I know all the artists. I know all the celebrities. I'm going to the celebrities. I'm getting in. I'm going to wow. go interview Sting. I'm doing all this different stuff. And all, all I, I looked at was from a distribution model. Was and I? I try to compare it to like music, right? Like back in the day, uh, Koch Records was a record company in New York that is, it was almost like people used to call it like the graveyard for, for rappers. Like once they got off their big independent, I mean, big major label deal, they would go to Koch and they would work them independently. And what Koch Records would do is literally like, if you know everybody and people know you, they'll give you a budget, you go and hustle and get your producers and everything. And then they will put out your albums. Cameron, um, Jim Jones, they made it really successful at Koch Records. So for me, it looked from a distribution model, I was like, I don't really need them to do what I'm doing. And I've always been a person knowing I understood what drive the engine. The engine in any media company is sponsorship, right? And I have really great relationships with sponsors, right? So I always knew that I'll never forget somebody told me, they said, um, content is, I mean, it's a little bit different now, but content is 
the thing in between commercials, not the other way around. Meaning, if these if these people don't sponsor our show, we won't be here, right? So I always wow. had great relationships with sponsors. Like I would go above and beyond for sponsors. If I had to do a two hour appearance. I make sure I come 15 minutes early. I may stay 30 minutes later. I'm giving them ideas about, you know, their brand or their product. So I already understood that. So what the TV station did for me was like, I'm like, I'm doing everything. Like, y'all, I'm y'all editing, y'all giving me the commercial. But like, if I want to get a really hot artist, a really hot celebrity on my show, I got to go get them. I got to go get, I'm paying the Uber for them. I'm doing all this stuff. I'm paying for their makeup. Like I'm, so I looked at it like, and and I always looked at the numbers of sponsorship. Like, hold up. Y'all got paid that. And you got to remember my show for the TV station was more, this is the first time they did it because they were a news station. So my show was the guinea pig show. Like, Mm. let's give you a show and see what, what happens. And then the success of my show, they were like, let's do another show. And then they gave another guy another show. They gave him more resources. We'll talk about that at, at another time. Mm. But I was like, so I'm looking at the sponsors. I'm looking at how much money they make. And they would talk to me like, oh, yeah, we made this much money off the sponsor. I'm like, what? So now I'm start counting up the sponsors. I'm like, right. And I'm looking at my paycheck and I'm like, no. And there's no, and I'll never forget, but I'll take it back to ET. I cannot hand down to my sons a job or props or respect. Like, man, I loved your dad. Like, I get it. Like, our name, our last name, and our, and our, um, who we are means a lot. But if, if I'm dead broke, I can't give my interviews to my kids. So I was like, man, it's just time to go. I just, I was wow. like, no, I did the math. I'm like, I'm, I have a really big name here in Philly. People know me. I've poured equity into a lot of people and a lot of companies. Why not go out on my own and get, if I, if they're paying me this much, I know I can make 10 times that on my own. Mm, wait, wait, Let me, wait. So, oh, you got, yeah. you got some moves? I'm sorry. Yeah. I was, I just wanted to double down real quick. If you don't mind, Niggs. Go ahead. I, Queen, Q, Q, what was the, what was the first thing you did after like, you bounced out. Like, what was that first move? Because I think also, and, and I keep just thinking about the listeners, because I know there's somebody out there who is, you know, in a similar role, maybe not coming off of a TV show per se, but still between opportunities can go all in on their own thing. And they're like, man, but which, which move do I do first? Like, do I I'm go a- for the content? Do I go for the sponsor? What, what did you do first? Yeah, I'm so one, the first thing I did, well, I've always worked on other things outside of what I was doing, right? And I, I had um, I have another situation with a another show that I'm pitching, but I have ownership in this show. Mm. So that was the first thing. Was like, okay, if I'm going to leave, I'm going to make sure what the next thing I do, if it's going to be on a big network or not, is ownership. So the first thing I did was make sure I had ownership in this other project that I'm working on, right? The second thing I did was me and my boy Fuzzy, he comes to, man, I've known Fuzz for 20 years. He's like, yo, we should start a podcast. So before we even cracked the mic, turned on anything, we formed a company, right? So we formed a company and now we have a company for our podcast. I don't even even like saying podcast because we're doing content, right? Y'all like this can turn into Nikki and Moose conference, every, any and everything, Nikki and Moose, like everything you can think of. Like we say podcast, but podcast only means audio. So we formed a company. So that was the first thing we did before we even did an Instagram live, before we cracked open a mic, it was all about ownership. So that, those were the, those are the first two things was talk to my lawyer on these next projects that I was working on. And then it was, I knew what I was doing with because I made other things hot, right? I made artists hot. I made stores hot. It was like, okay, this is what we got to do for the next five, six weeks. Let's just show, let's just proof of concept. And nice. then while we're doing proof of concept, it's like linking into the sponsors that I've already had relationships with. And that that will be the the next rollout of, of what we're doing just on that podcast side or content side with Fuzz that I'm doing. So that's so good. This is so good. Yeah. Um, 
I want to I want to go back a little bit just because I want to go back to the very beginning of COVID where mm-hmm. like that aha moment was like yo I'm I'm doing all of this like yeah. all of this like talk to some of the content creators that like are learning everything kind of now but in real life how does those skills during covid kind of transfer to what's happening in 2021 and beyond like you 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 got you know a whole business from it but kind of just make it super plain like yo literally i learned this and that and yeah. and everything like that okay so for me it always starts with the no right like and i just try to tell my sons this all the time like go get this and i'm like well that thing was blocking the thing and i'm like ah no no, I don't like, I'm going to be honest. I hope they don't see this anytime soon. I can care less if my kids get straight A's in school because that doesn't, that does not make you successful in life. There are going to be obstacles and you have to understand like, all right, this obstacle, I need to step over this obstacle. So the first thing was I worked at the radio station and at the radio station, it was all about shooting content. So I was like, can you, I had like a digital person. Sometimes he would shoot it. Sometimes he wouldn't. So then I bought a camera. But even before that, I bought my first camera in 07. So I always had my, my camera. So then I would go on YouTube and I would learn how to edit. So when I worked in, on Big Boy Show in LA, he wasn't paying me a lot of money like my first year of the contract. I was like, yo, can I at least shoot content? I want to shoot my own interviews because this is why I really came to LA. He's like, sure, do your thing. Purchase the camera. I start shooting, you know, shooting content. Some of that content went viral. Viral back then meant it made it to world star hip hop. Right. Right. So a couple of my interviews made it to world star. So then they came to me and was like, yo, Q, you think you can shoot content for us? Sure. Let's do it. So now I started giving big ideas. That was, that was me starting to produce. We started doing content. We started producing. So then I learned how to edit. Just a tad bit. Just enough to get by. So I always had that in the tuck, right? So then I knew when an editor would tell me, oh, it took this long. I'm like, you're lying, because I know how long that takes, right? So now I bought a camera. I know how to edit. Then I had to go from like, okay, I can shoot, and I know how to edit a little bit. How do I do audio? So then I have a microphone, uh, XLR cable, plugging into my camera at, that's camera at the time, and then I just had steps along the way. Nikki, how do I get, I see you with the wireless thing. What's going on? What's E doing? I'm asking a bunch of questions. I'm getting the, the setup. So when the beginning of COVID hit, when I hit, when before that, when I go to the TV station, hey guys, can I get a camera for the bad boy reunion? Diddy's going to be here. What time is that going to be? 10 o'clock. Oh, uh, we, we can only do 10 to 1030. I know anything where rappers means is going to be longer than that. Right. So I have my own camera. I have my camera guy. Sometimes camera people are a little unreliable. So now I got my own setup. And now I don't need anybody. I got my cameras. I got my mics. I got everything. So in the beginning of COVID, they had to put my show on hold. And I'm sitting here like, how can I, again, another no. Q, we got to put your show on hold. I'm like, how can I do this on my own? I know I have Adobe. You know, and I may be talking a little technical for people that's no, watching, but I know it, I got I, I have Adobe Premiere or Adobe Suite, which costs me fifty dollars a month, which I write off of my taxes because I use it for work. So I got Adobe Suite, I got a camera, I have my mics, hmm, I got wow. eCam. Mm. Shout out to right, E-cam. and this is right, and this is life, right? I'm like, okay, how do you put this together? I'm like, yo, I called my boss at the time. I was like, look. I can do this on my own. I can shoot it. At, at, you can shoot it at your house. And the reason why he was shocked was because I never did things for credit. Because it was somebody else there. I'm just being real. I'm just, just talking about haters and all that stuff. Yeah. It was somebody else there that was taking the credit for a lot of things. And I never was like, look, guys, this is what I did. Because it was, it was never, my job was never about them. I'm going to do a great job. And in result of me doing a great job for me, y'all going to get the best product. Because I'm not doing it for y'all. Good. Oh, no, you, you could do, yeah, you could do this. You could do this for, yeah. Okay, we're going to send you over the elements. 
I'm going to just see one show. Let's see what you can do. It needs to be 21 minutes and 15 seconds. Perfect. Got it. Edit the joint up. I know my show. Uh, 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 uh. Had my co-host, my producer on Ecamm. All right, thank you. Boom. Edit it up. 21.15. Here you go. He called me back. Oh, my God. I didn't know it was going to look like this. Yeah, because you, I'm, I don't know what y'all thought. Right. And I did, I did 39 shows from home. Um, mm -hmm. I did the, so I, I shot the show, I edited the show, I produced the show, I booked talent for the show. I did everything for the show. 39 shows from home. And I think when I did 30, my 35th episode, they were like, hey, we got to put your show on hold, but we got another idea for you. And I was like, yo, I gave everything for these people. I gave everything for this job. Um, I know what to do. It's just time to go. And I, I never forget before they called me this summer, I told my wife, I was, I have an intuition. I was like, I don't think I'm going back. She's like, really? Uh, I was like, yeah, I think, I think I'm done. Yeah, I think I'm done. And I never forget, you know, 2020 was crazy. Um, again, <laughs> approaching my 42nd birthday, I'm like, yo, I can't believe I'm 42. When are you going to jump? And this summer was the toughest summer because two of my closest friends, you know, both of their dads died in the in a two, three month span that had nothing to do with COVID. Mm. You know, I went to more funerals this year than I've ever been. Right. And I was like, you're going to be out of here one day. So what are you going to do? And I'll never forget. I was in the hospital with one of my um, boys family and uh, I called I called the station. I was like, yeah, I'm 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 done. I'm a, I'm not going to come back. You're not coming back? What? Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. They called me like four or five times. That's how I knew I was earning a lot of money for them. Because if I didn't earn a lot of money for them, they'd be like, all right, bye. See yeah. you later. And I'll never forget, before I called them, I called E.T. And I was like, yo, man. I'm about to call him, tell him, like, I'm like, what you think? And I always, you know, I love, I knew what I, I, knew what I had to do, but I love having, um, you know, somebody like E.T. who's a, you know, mentor to all of us and and being able to talk to him. He was like, dude, like, you got to just fly, man. Like, you got it. You got it in you. You know what you got. I know what you got. You got fly. And I left and I, I called him and I told him I, I wasn't coming back. And it was like, I was like, yeah. And, and for, I'm not going to say for six weeks, I want to say five to six weeks, it was tough because it was a mourning process because for so long I wanted to be a television star. Right. And that was my dream since I was 12 years old. Right. So letting, letting go of that dream, even though I left, I had, I had like a mourning process where I was like, I was like, I was trying to get it together. Like, man, this was my dream though. Like I thought it was going to look like this and it was a process. And I was like, all right, you got to shake out of this now. And then that's when I did those, you know, the, well, I was already working on this one uh, deal for the show and I was like ownership. And then the other deal um, with me and Fuzz was like, all right, let's form a company first. And um, sometimes you got to let go of how you think your dream is going to look. Mm. And that was, mm. yeah, that was, that was, I was like, wow. Yeah. And, and it felt weird for me putting out content. And, uh, you know, I'll give it to Nikki because Nikki, she'd be like, yo, Q, you got some dope stuff. Why aren't you letting your stuff go, man? Let it go. Let it go. I was like, oh, no. And then I, I felt, and it, that's what sometimes a job will do for you or jobs or titles would do for you. You get so wrapped up in being this person from that thing that when you... Me, when I let go of that thing, it was still weird because I'm like, hey, it's just me. And I knew people know me and people I have relationships from me, but it's different saying it and then doing it. It's very different. And I needed like five to six weeks to like, all right, shake it off and, and get it get it together. Hmm. Real quick plug. Uh, he mentioned Ecamm. We're using Ecamm. If you want a 14-day trial with Ecamm, go to NikkiAndMoose.com slash Ecamm, two M's. Okay, two M's. Anyways, go ahead, Moose. Like commercials. Yeah, no, that's, me? that's, yeah, just a little quick commercial break, you know, producing yeah. the show. But, man, that's that's deep. But, Q, you said sometimes you got to let go of how you thought your dream was going to look. Man, that's, that's a... Uh, that's that's a big piece because I, I guess what you're trying to say is like people hang on to an image of what they thought it was going to be and then they keep maybe yeah. even 
staying in the same rabbit hole or just chasing that same, you know, uh, route and not necessarily getting somewhere, right? And I, I'm, I'm yeah. just dialoguing that, yeah. No, I mean, no, yes. I mean, a thousand percent because, you know, before, you know, again, I watched Arsenio Hall when I was 12. I was like, I want to do that. What he's doing right there, right? And yeah, I could still do it. But now TV's switching. Like I got three TVs in my house. We watch Family Feud as a bonding, you know, you know, hour, hour and a half of Family Feud tonight if we have time. But like TV's not really on in our house. And if you can look at the kids or you look at the youth, they don't watch TV. Like I used to have to turn, I used to have to call radio station, like, please, can y'all play my song? Please. You turn on YouTube now. Right. So you already know it's a dying brand. And I'm not disrespecting anybody who's doing TV. I'm not disrespecting anyone who's doing radio, but it is shifting. And newsflash, iHeart Media owns radio stations, but they also have a big podcasting department. That should tell you something. And everything they told you to well told us on the radio is talk short and sweet and get out of there. And now you could talk for two hours with one of your best friends and just talk about whatever. And this is the kind of content people want. So, um, yeah, that's the, I mean, that was the part I had to kind of let go. Like, yo, you don't have to be on, like I could have 50, listen, if I have 50,000 people that genuinely ride for me, and I don't even need 50. If I got 10,000 people that genuinely ride for me and give me, or my company five dollars a month. That's a real business. Yeah, that's like huge, huge. So I mean, that's you know that's what I'm talking about. You you just gotta you know go with the times and see what's going on. And I, I foresee like I've seen the ratings on television go down every year. Like the things that you like, oh we got a point whatever or we got a one share or it's like people aren't turning tuning in like that. You know, so what's going to happen in 20 years when the kids that are never, that grew up on YouTube, you think they're going to just all of a sudden grow up and be like, no, I need to sit down and watch television? No. That's a good point. That is a yeah. good point. Yeah, I never even thought about that. That's real. Uh, I, how is it different from radio and TV to podcasts? Like, to your own content. Like, I know there's some maybe similar traits, but how you're yeah. doing it, like, what is the what is the difference? Well, I mean, for me now, I don't have to, I don't have to sell anybody. Like, if I want to, me and Fuzz want to do an interview, we just do it. Mm. I could just do it. I have the freedom to just do it. And, you know, what, what radio and television have taught me is, the art of, right? The art of talking to people, the art of listening, the art of talking, making sure your 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 thoughts are clear. But I'm free. I can literally, like, I know I'm still policing myself. Like, for, for us sometimes, like, yo, we should interview something. I'm like, whole oh, fam, fam. I'll do a lot of other things with a lot of other people. I can't, you know, just relax sometimes, right? right. right? But I'm free, I'm free to, I can talk to somebody for an hour, right? And then we can take that interview and I can give it, I can put the whole thing on YouTube. We can repurpose it, put it on Twitch, right? And start playing clips. I can put it on YouTube live. We can post it on Instagram. You can put it on Facebook. You can do a Facebook live show. So you can repurpose the content so much more. On TV, it was just like, you did the show. Mm. And you got to remember when you're doing TV sometimes and you don't have... Um, a digital part, digital department that's not doing, they're doing news and they're not thinking about repurposing your clips as like funny clips on their Instagram page, funny clips to go on the YouTube or Facebook. Sometimes you miss the boat and you guys know this. People may yeah. watch your stuff live, but it lives on, you know, like on demand is what we, what we do. People don't have to catch your thing live. The same thing with radio. Like radio, you know, when I was doing radio, it was like, they just didn't get it. I was like, yo, take this, repurpose it, have a, like, I was trying to pay for my own digital team when I was doing radio. Last time I was doing radio, I'm like, if I'm gonna pay for this stuff, I can do it on my own. Only thing y'all getting are the, are the sponsors. That's crazy. 
That's crazy. I but, can get a sponsor. I ain't tripping off of that. But but is it better connections? And I already know this answer, but is it better connections when you were working with the radio and, and TV shows than just doing it on your own? Because I mean, I want you to name some of them, right? Yeah. Who you've done on your own, but is is there a big difference or have you really leveraged the connections that you've done prior to so it's almost even easier now? Yeah, so I will tell you this. Um Fuzz knows Fuzz lives in LA. Fuzz right. knows everybody, right? So it's literally like me and him talk and then I know my people, right? So we literally are putting our phone books together yeah. and let's saying, "All right, dog, what you want to do? All right, what you I, this is a real thing. We're sitting there talking, and this is right before the G- Georgia Senate race, a runoff race, right? And he's, I'm like, yo, dog, we got, literally, I'm sitting right here. I'm like, dog, we have to get somebody from Georgia. Who should we get? So we start kicking off names. I'm like, oh, it'll be kind of cool to get Stacey Abrams, but I don't think we can get her, <laughs> you know, the day before the election. I know she's busy, right? So we start, I'm like, Luda, who you thinking? He's like, yo, what about JD? I might like, hit him up. He's like, I'm about to call him. So he calls, while he's calling JD, I'm looking on my phone, right? I'm looking on my phone on Instagram, just do, 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 do. I'm like, yo, dog, JD is in the car. He's about to go vote. So I'm like, he's like, man, he ain't pick up. I'm like, look, I say, yo, JD, me and Fuzz looking for you. Yo, 10 minutes later, he gets JD on the phone. Yo, JD said he'd be ready in 10 minutes. So it was another 10 minutes. I'm like, oh, snap. I don't even know what I had on. Ran upstairs, put a hoodie on. We do the interview just like that. And that's the connections like we've had for so long. But now we just we're doing it for ourselves. And when you do it for TV, you have to kind of like, can y'all call in at 11? Can y'all call in at? Can you do uh, you have to have two phones and the ISDN line, like all of that stuff, man, please. We running and gunning. And you know how artists are. Sometimes they up at 10. Sometimes they up at 2 a.m. Sometimes, you know, it doesn't. Yeah. It's just we can do it. Any it, this, These are relationships we've had for more than half our life. Fuzz started when he was a teen. I started when I was a teen. So it's just like literally who we want to get. Like we've interviewed uh, on our own Timberland, Jermaine Dupree, <sighs> Questlove, Mm. skills the day he dropped the um wrap up on new year's day to wrap up t-pain um we just at ninth wonder we're gonna drop uh a couple of days ninth wonder and we we interviewed because jay dilla is dilla day um coming up yeah so we interviewed jay dilla's mom in ninth wonder together oh wow yeah we have um Bree steves who's from philly um her record label reached out so now people are looking like yo can you can you like can you do this mm. interview for it? you know what I mean? Wow. Yeah. Wow. wow. Mm. Yeah. Hold on. That's what's up. That's what's up. Hey, yeah. hey, you know, it's funny. We talked about the we talked about the versus model quite a few times on on the show. And um, you know, you mentioned Timbaland. So actually, someone like yourself coming from the music and radio station, uh, what's your take on the whole versus battle? Like, what do you what do you think of it, especially for what you know or what we know a battle was and what yeah. they've done just, you know, throughout this time. What What's your take on that? No, I think it's amazing, right? I'm, the only thing you have to see live is sporting events. And I'm not even going to say basketball, right? Like, you got to – you have to see football live because it only happens once a week, right? And it's real. It's like you lose three games in a row, it's a problem. So it's like sporting events – and now it's like versus, right? Because versus has become such. It doesn't even matter if Keisha Cole comes on or not, right? We've had fun. She didn't come. She wasn't here. Uh, she the had whole, a problem. It was a whole right? spec- spectacular event, just off the the memes and yeah. and the non arrivals. It becomes it becomes like boxing. So I, I think what they've been able to do, not only not only for them, they've been able to give people who we may have not said, hey, we you know. We may have not, it makes it, I'm trying to watch my words. It's, it makes people, if if they're the artists, man, you're out, you're back in the spotlight. You're getting, you know, most of them over a million views on this. That's bigger than television shows, right? right? Two, people are starting to stream your, your content instantly. 
Three, you have to think that in 2022, this is going to be a tour, mm. right? Like, who wouldn't want to see Brandy and Monica going back and forth when the world wow. is open back up? Who wouldn't want to see yeah. it live? Keisha, Keisha Cole and Ashanti doing their thing. Like, that's... Now, now I'm not saying Keisha Cole and Ashanti wouldn't do stadiums, but that may be your local arena to see them. Right. Or they may be on a package tour. You know, they have merchandise. Like this is, it's a brilliant thing that Swiss and, and Timberland, you know, um, you know, they've developed, you know, over the last, I mean, think about it. Oh, it hasn't been a year yet. No. This is, I mean, this is amazing. And it shows you that creativity and talent will always trump anything. It doesn't matter where it is. Creativity and talent will trump anything. Any and everything. I don't care if you're singing on your cell phone. I don't care if you have a HD DSLR camera. Doesn't matter. It does not matter. Create. This is what this is showing us. You you just have to be creative. Yeah. What was your favorite battle before I get into mine? Oh my gosh, Jeezy and Gucci Man. I thought yeah. somebody was going to die. I didn't know what was going on. I locked my phone in my house. I, was, I didn't know. What. I was like, what? what is he doing? He said that. Oh my no, God. He said it thought I was going to die. It was too much. Like, because knowing what really went on with yeah. those two. Yeah. And if you know Jeezy, like Jeezy is, he's changing his, his, you know, his image and he's, he's more polished now. Right. Man, y'all do some research. Like that was crazy. So even for them yeah. to be in the same room. Was crazy, and then even how oh, Jeezy lined him up talking. You know, he had the speech, and he was like, two things for certain. One thing for sure, I'm the realest." Mm. Oh my goodness, that took yeah, me back to '05. I have, <laughs> yo, <laughs> I was. Come on, man, Listen, that was that was it for me. I I am mad at that. I would I would definitely have to say uh, the ladies, um, Brandy and Monica, just because of the pettiness. Like I don't know if that's really fixed. I don't. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It it was too many like stabs, like indirectly, and yeah. it was just weird. It was just weird. I I don't see them on tour. I, uh, I don't see them yeah. on tour. I don't. I'm sorry. But um, anyways, so the what is what with the podcast and what you and Fuzz is is creating? What is the goal? Because like now you're saying people are reaching out and I can almost think that it would feel more like on your radio days, like they got to come to you when they're about to drop something. They got to come to you when they're trying to promote. So like, what is the goal for this one? Yeah, that's great. I'm glad you said that because I'm, I get one, of, I'm, I become one of these like futurists, like, oh my gosh, Oh my gosh, I want to get this person podcast. I want to do that with them. And then I want to do this. Like you should have saw me yesterday. I was like losing my mind, right? So for this one, it's literally one, I want us to be, I want to show two black men who are in their 40s being vulnerable about any and everything, right? Yes, we come from hip hop and you know what's about this, but being vulnerable because the problem I like, I see with a lot of my friends, right? It's like, I have friends now, like I'm like 50 years old, 45 years old, they got an issue. I'm like, can y'all talk? Can y'all talk? Can y'all just talk? Like somebody's calling me. I'm like, dog, I feel like I'm in high school. Just talk. Man, I can't believe he, just talk, right? So I think I wanna, I wanna show, we want, I know my part, we wanna show black men being very vulnerable and open. And using music, hip hop, and public, you know, and, and current and current events as a backdrop for us to be vulnerable. That's that's, that's the number one thing. I, I the love second that. thing, yeah. The second thing from that is you don't see a lot of us. I'll never forget somebody clown chameleonaire, right? And they was like, I forget, he was at like a Golden State Warriors game on the floor. They was like, Huh, how a chameleonaire, how's he getting on the floor? Is he cleaning up? And he was like, hey guys, um, I'm glad you guys asked. Um, I'm here because I can afford the seats. That's one. Two, I invested in tech and 
this is what I'm doing. And I'm, I'm, I'm a tech investor. So I was just, you know, coming here to the game after I had like a tech meeting. He said, I'm paraphrasing what he right, was saying. Right, right, right. But I think us as coming from hip hop, we have hip hop has influenced the world. Anytime you want to get hot, you come to hip hop. Anytime you want to promote something, we do it for free. Right. So I want to make sure that we get into the world of tech and I want to make sure that we we become a hub for breaking tech entrepreneurs as well. And then with that, I want to also be able to I want to like I want to get in on the ground floor of of a clubhouse. When, you know, because it's, it's not ever going in like it's going to be another one. I want to get on the ground floor up like just like how I told you all before and I was on before, like how the relationships Oh, I knew Kanye, man, me and E, I've known E, I met E seven years ago. I understood what that was. Like, I want to understand what other things are in other sectors and bring that to the forefront. Most of so, I'm going to steal something. I'm going to steal something real quick. So you mentioned Clubhouse. Yeah. Um, so I, I struggle with this, the whole investing and them not letting, you know, Black creators invest and everything like that. And that's been kind of rumbling and things when supposedly, and not saying it's not true, but Mm -hmm. anytime that minority, I'm not even going to say black people, just minorities jump on an app, it blows up, right? Mm -hmm. We saw what Master P said about it. What is your take as far as, okay, another, another app. Now we're talking about Clubhouse. It's yeah. popping. Everybody's talking about it. Meek, your boy is going crazy at one point. You yeah. were active on it. Walla was active. Like, what is your take as far as, you know, the black community jumping on Clubhouse and the investing part about it? Like, and which will lead into like how, you know, important it is to own our content. But what is your take on it? Um, I think one, you, you know, we talk about investing, right? Like, luckily, I have a best friend who he owns a wealth management firm. So sometimes it's a lot of stuff I don't know because it's it's impossible. Y'all know it's impossible just to even sometimes even get this camera. And <laughs> y'all should have saw me. Like, I was for 25, 28 minutes, I was trying to get my stuff together. And usually I'm good on getting my stuff together. So it's hard for me being a creative and trying to be a creative inside of my own business to then say, okay, I'm I'm going to learn because it's out there, right? I'm going to learn about Bitcoin. I'm going to learn about this. I'm going to learn about that. So I have people around me. So my boy, my my boy Lamont Brown, I got to plug him. He has an uh, investment uh, firm called Odyssey Capital. So he tells me about how the we have to understand like how this stuff works. Yo, it's the first round of investing. The way you find out about this is you do X, Y, and Z. So I think, because it's cool to just say, oh, we need to invest. And it's just like, it's, oh, it's, such, it's such a top, it's such an icing on the cake when you, when you talk about this stuff. But you have to have people that really understand what you're getting into before you get into it. That's one, right? So that's knowledge. And if you're going to be that person, like you, you got to take years and years of of time or you got to meet up with somebody or link up with people that understand what that means. Right. Um, so number two, I do think you have to either have ownership in something on on the app or you got to be selling something we have to. And I'm not saying you have to, you have to go on the app and say, Hey man, buy my phone for 1999. I'm not saying that, but like you have to go on these apps with a, with a clear vision of why you're on these apps. So I think, and that's investing because I see Nikki. I see you on there. Like that's coming back. Like you being on there, you may not be investing, but you're investing in yourself because that's where everybody is. So it's like Nikki's on here. I, I don't even know how many followers you on. Like I know you up there, right? Because you invest 20, in time. Twenty point five. You know what I'm saying? I just you know what I'm saying. It's like light work. Uh, <laughs> light work. <laughs> uh, uh-huh. But you, but you're, but it's all driving back to your business. Yeah. Right, it, but every time I see you on there, it's about adding value, and you adding value to people comes back to you. To comes back to what you guys are doing on the podcast. Comes back to other things that you have and that you're setting up. 
down the line. So I, I just think if you have an opportunity to be on these apps um, and you have the time, just make sure that you have a game plan to move it back to some of the stuff that you're owning. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Moose. Yeah, I had to ask yeah, it. You mentioned it. Nah, it was a key word. Yeah, no, it's a good, it's a it's a good point because actually on our on our live show, I don't know if it was last week or the week before, we talked about why is it that you know the minority community doesn't have those opportunities. And one of the main things that we talked about was, yo, just lack of information. You know, again, we're aware of okay, yeah, you have to be an investor, but to your point, Q that how, how to get in that AC, you know, that BC funding, whatever it is, I don't know that we are that well aware or equipped to go into those, right? Because you can even have the money, but do you have the relational capital where somebody's going to go to you and say, hey, have this opportunity. I think this might be the next one. We want you in on this. So it's a different type of both relational and informational capital that I think is interesting. But now that we're kind of all in you know, the content space and podcasting and all this stuff, one of the things that we briefly discussed before got, we got on and I'm sure, Nikki, you can add some context to this piece as well. But what just happened recently with uh, Joe Budden and jumping on Patreon? You know, I, I think you said you, you spent some time really thinking on that as well. So, yeah, get, give us your thoughts on that. Nick, feel free to add, you know, some more context yeah. to it as well for those who are listening. And I think this would be a good. No, I, I think with Joe, man, I, I think what they're doing over you know, at his network and what he's doing, man, it's it's amazing. It is amazing. I, you know, I've met Joe a couple of times, but you know, I, I'm just amazed at his transition, right? That's number one. Number two, you guys know being a create creator, it, it becomes a time where it's like, all right, I, I I'm doing this for y'all. Can y'all can y'all pay me? Yeah, can I can y'all just give me a little something, right? And sometimes that feels weird and it um it sometimes hurts the relationship with you and your uh, you know, your I don't want to like to say fame with your community, right. right? And with Joe Button going over to Patreon, it's almost like the reason why I like Twitch. Twitch is a platform is it was basically about gamers, right? And gamers when you're gaming, People pay five for subscriptions, five dollars a month. Like you see, T Pain is on there. We talked. That's why I really wanted to talk to T Pain, yeah. right? We talked He's to him. Heavy I'm like, on there. T Pain was giving up. Like, yo, dude, you need this kind of computer. You gotta do this. This is what's up going on. And he was like, yo, I'm. I stream like twenty times a month. I have sponsors. Da 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 da. So mm. he's breaking out the business of it, right? T Grizzly is on there. Soldier Boy is on there. Snoop Dogg is on there. I'm like, oh, but. What Twitch is, it's a community where you know that you have to, you're you're here and you're expected to give me money mm. as a creator. Because any other platform is really not based on that. Twitter is like your opinion real quick and you go back and forth with people. Yeah. Instagram is like, I'm giving you content. Hey, right. right? And then Facebook is the same thing, kind of, but it's like people more engagement on Facebook. But with Joe saying, look. I'm still relevant and I'm hot. Like I was telling you about what they did with um, Koch Records, like how how um, how Cameron and Jim Jones went over there and they was like, making a lot of money and it made it, it made it cool for people right. to go over there. So I think what Joe is doing, he's making it cool for the audience to say, hey, I got $100 a month. I'm going to cut my cable. Because people about to cut their cable, like, totally, right? I'm going to cut my cable. Um, we're going to band together, and I'm going to get YouTube TV or another streaming, whatever, right? And it costs me $70 a month or it costs me $100 a month. I got five people with me. Y'all going to give me $20 a month. So now my, you, my cable only costs me $20 a month, right? Then I believe people are going to have another um, pot for discretionary income for people that they really like. And let's say that's $100, right? And let's say they give $5 to Joe Budden. Say if they give another $20 to Netflix, they give enough. So now you'll be able to say, I have content, I'm adding value to your life. Subscribe to my community. And people will be more apt to do that. I think in the next five to 10 years, we're going to see the decline 
in what we see in television, or you may see television try to do this model. I mean, you can see it with like the different apps and they try to like, uh, you know, commercial you to death, but that's where, that's where it's going to be. And you're going to see millions of people making income. Like it's like being a YouTuber or being, having your own community, people are going to be like, like you're going to, you're going to see in the future people run up to Nikki and Moose and people are like, oh, can I get a picture? And then somebody is going to be there. I'm like, who is that? Right. Like, that's Nikki and Moose. You don't know. Oh, every They do this. And they're like, oh, let me check them out. That's how it's going to be. Everybody's going to have their community. And you're going to be able to live off of your community. Yeah, so I think with Joe Button big. doing that, it's, it's opening up the audience and training the audience saying, I'm a creator. You should give me your money. That is real. That I agree with that to, to an extent, right? And, and what I mean by that is if, if we've seen the movement of Joe and the, like the whole full ownership kind of vibe, like when he went to Spotify in thoughts of I'm going to get data and I'm going to have this exclusive deal partnering with them was cool, right? So then he got off. He's like, yo, they're not giving me my worth. I'm doing it on my own, everything like that. And now he partners with Patreon, right? Which, um, for those people who don't know what that is, it is a platform where, like, if we have this podcast, we would do, like, extra bonus content and give you exclusivity and all that great stuff. And there's different tiers, right? Um, But... I was almost confused because I was like, I thought he would actually create something like that on his own. Right. And then looking into it, because I, I believe in community. I believe that people want to support you as you are a creator, like, because you are adding value to people's lives. And so people do pay for community. People pay for access and people pay for exclusivity. So He's right on the money with that. He should have had, um, he should have monetized the com- his community a long time ago, right? But everything's about timing. But I was very shocked that he partnered with another thing. Now, granted, he has equity on this one. So it kind of oh, makes sure. sense, right? So um, we've always been big uh, on Nikki and Moose about talking about ownership and equity and and don't necessarily do things unless you have uh, a piece of it, right? But I'm still like, there was so much rant about, I'm doing this on my own. I made a Joe Joe Button Network, everything like that. But here I am now again, but I'm going to fight for the creators. So I was a little bit confused by it, but not necessarily like trash. That was a horrible move, anything like that, yeah. because I still think from a back end, you still need the machine. And Patreon has that structure. Patreon has that machine that's been proven with uh, smaller creators and everything like that. But I think with now the light to it, that's going to only build up the value of Patreon even more, which will bring in more investors, which will give uh, more fuel to this machine that's already working. So I yeah. could see from a strategic standpoint why that happened. I was just a little like, okay, you've been you've been ranting and raving about ownership and your content's worth everything and you should have more control of it and everything like that. But now we're giving a cut to Patreon What's the difference? Yeah, but, I, I think, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. No, I, I think, I, I was listening to his podcast, I think today, and yep. he was saying it was worth, Patreon's worth a billion dollars. Yeah. And he's on the board. And I think that board, him being on the board may come with him having shares. Oh, he does. Right? And the ownership, right? They so, were in Clubhouse. I get, what you're I, I, I get what you're saying. Because he was, he was very aggressive, and I understand what you're saying. But maybe, maybe in a lot of times, right? Like I, I will tell you guys this: I 
talk to people or I hear from people that don't understand me leaving the TV station. Mm -hmm. And they don't believe I left the TV station. They felt they thought I I got fired and I was ashamed. Mm. Right? So they can't even understand my moves, right? Like, oh, you left? How, hold on. So you're telling me you left. You got three kids, bro. Mm -hmm. You got three kids and a wife. And it's, it's, we're in the middle of a, a global pandemic. And you're telling me you left your job? That's for real. Right. For real? Right. Like, you love to... Come on, man. It's TV, bro. Like, you're on television. Like, why would you... I would never... Okay. So, again, I can't even give it the... I can't even give my energy to it. It's just like, all right, cool. You'll see my moves. Yeah, yeah. Later. And maybe you may never see my moves in high five, and I'm cool with that too. But it's he's smarter than that. That's what I would give him. Like he's it's something else. No, no, no. And this is the thing for himself, it's a great move. For his network, it's a great move. I was only a little throwback from it because as content creators, we look at Joe as almost the voice of content creation, right? He's been doing this for the longest and made, he's been documenting himself like for years, right? To where that started to trend and it, he is one of the godfathers of that, hands down, right? But now you're almost saying, Okay, I got mine, but now I need all the content creators to get on Patreon and give us a cut. That's where I was like a little thrown off. But yeah. then again, for smaller content creators, we don't necessarily have that machine that Patreon is providing. So it's, I, I see the uh, hold win. On, hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. I got to stop you. Don't oh. stop you. Hey, I know, I know y'all ain't talking about y'all ain't got no machine. No, no, uh, I'm, hold I on, I, I, hold on. I didn't say me, all right? I, huh. I said, huh. I said huh. wait, huh. well, no, okay, so no, 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 okay, well, let's let's break it all the way down. So, do I, do we necessarily have the capability to do audio, live stream, community, um, polls, uh, uh Patreon, y'all need to pay me after just me breaking all the way down your services. But I'm just saying, um, a Discord services all in one with tiers in like an all in one service. At this moment, no. And for that, that is a way big paycheck to have that membership site with all those services in one plus uh, emails being sent out plus payment and all. So that's what I'm saying as a machine. For smaller content creators, that does make sense. I'm just was a little thrown back because, okay, you've now rant and rave, but now you have equity. So now you're like, this makes all the sense. All content creators need to come to Patreon. Yeah, I, and I think I think a, a part of his his issue with um, with Spotify was they wouldn't give him shares. They want to give him shares, right? They would, they wanted that. He said he turned down, you know, $30 million. Um, but it was more about information, shares, back end knowledge. Yep. And this is what Patreon is going to, you know, Absolutely. provide for him. So. Absolutely. That's what, yeah. it, from his standpoint, right? From what he's doing, best move. I'm just playing devil's advocate. I'm not even saying I disagree with the movement or anything like that. I'm just saying, this is another platform you're telling us to go to. We went to Spotify. That didn't go well. Now you're telling us to go to Patreon. Yeah, I get it. I, and, you know, for... I just like him putting a spotlight or partnering with somebody to say, hey, I'm a content creator. I know other content creators have used this platform. Y'all have to get used to spending money. And yeah. I think... They should, you know, I think they should. I think we that this is how this works because sometimes you, I mean, you you hear from people. Mm -hmm. I, I, I cut my cable. I forget it was like a year ago. I'm like, why am I like, why am I watching this? Yeah. It's not, I don't even watch it. Yeah, like I don't even watch it, and I'm paying for this service that I'm not even using and watching. 
So I'd rather, honestly, I'm just being real. Like, I don't know how much money I pay on all the services I have, but I would give that to Nikki and Moose before I give that to, I could cut stars. Like, do I need to watch yeah. Power Book 2? I can watch it. I could find somebody else's passcode and give y'all that money. Facts. Being honest. Facts. I can give that money to ET. I can give that money to Carl. Like, why wouldn't I give it to people that are adding value in my life already? Facts. That, and that's and that's the way we have to kind of like that's uh, not just us as as content creators, but us as viewers of content have to like look like, dude, my kids don't watch TV. They yep. play Roblox and they're on YouTube when I let them. Yep. And yeah, it's a and it's the, a the, it's a break of oh go for it Nick's oh no go go you got it you got it yeah yeah no I'm saying that I think it's it's also a break of like a traditional pattern you know like you think about how many generations have grown up on I don't pay you know this person that I watch whatever I pay the network and that's just been a pattern so this is one of these eras especially after last year that it's like okay get ready to shift the rhythm now like the, just the entire even the funnel the cycle all of it is about to switch so there is a break in our programming or in our traditional pattern that i think is about to take place so i'm to your point i could see it happening i'm interested to see it when it's going to be normal like i know i, I listened to the yeah. clip also from from his podcast today nikki sent it over where he was talking about like normalizing certain things and I think it's a consume, like this is now a big shift because we're a, the creator or even the business person as well. Cause I can see it clearly. I see it more from the business side, right? I see that the, the, the content creator is going to produce more content and give you exclusivity. And that's really what you're paying for. So I can understand the, the reason for the investment there. So it's now influencing the consumer to believe that that's a feasible investment or that, you know, that makes sense where you could have gotten it for free in the past on YouTube or wait till it comes out on e either DSP. You get early access, you get bonus content, that kind of thing, which I think at some point it's, it's going to become relatively, you know, the norm. So, yeah. I mean, you were just, oh, oh. Well, hold on. well, let me say this. So yep. let me, let me get outside of my devil's advocate bag real quick because that's all I was doing. But, What's crazy is, and, and Moose, you kind of said it was where we're paying now for a network. Joe Budden is a network, right? So if you look at that last tier, it is paying for the network side. It's not just the support of the podcast. You are, the for the $25 one, you're paying to get an exclusive show. You're getting, pay, you're paying for uh, extra exclusivity for the, uh, extra content on the Joe Budden Network. Plus, on top of that, the two bonus section. Plus, on top of that, behind the scenes. So, he's making it normal for whether you're a small or big uh, content creator to be like, you can create your own network without paying so much money by joining this particular platform. So I think that is what he's making normal. Don't think that it has to come all out of your pocket now. You could create your own network and put it on Patreon and they take a certain cut, nothing up front. I think that's genius. Yeah. That part yeah. is genius. I had to get out of my devil's advocate back. I can get back no. in it if you need me to. <laughs> no, and, and also, like, before it was like, you have to be in New York... Uh, or LA to make it. Yes. You don't. Joe Rogan moved to Austin, Texas. Like, you don't have to be in these big places. We can hop on the internet. And again, it just depends, you know, if you if you live in, you know, where Pennsylvania or you live in, you know, Jersey, right? You can hop on and get with anybody in the any part of the world. Now, here's the real thing that I've been thinking about that we, we don't think about. We can take our content international now. And when I mean international, I'm talking about like non-English speaking countries that love our content and our swag. We can start, we looking at stuff here. I read this article where they said 50, in 2019, $59 billion was spent on streaming, 
right? $59 billion was spent on streaming advertising. So if you were live streaming, they would pay you $60 billion, I'm sorry, $60 billion, $59 billion was spent in China. $1 billion of those dollars were spent in the U.S. That's why you're going to see by the end of this year, every platform is going to have capability for you to be your own TV studio if you would like. Because they want you to stay on that platform so then advertisers will pay more. So then you can get paid more. Well, really, they can get paid more and then they can pay out more. So it's, it opens up the world to like, we're looking at like the world is really small now. Like we don't even have to really even think about the United States. Like really think about that. Like we're so United States central, you know, because this is where we're from. But please don't don't play if you start if you start connecting in I don't know I'm just just saying for an English speaking country let's say Ireland and you start being like the <laughs> the show in Ireland like that's possible it's crazy like it's the the fruit I like to say the fruit flavor combinations are endless I'm just saying like it's so much that we can do from from the comfort of wherever we are this is true this is true yeah. Hold on. Move started the whole debate vibe. I see what you did there. I see what you did. <laughs> I'm here for no, it. No, I mean, I, you, know, you know why I've always enjoyed the Patreon story? Because I remember when the founder first went on Casey Neistat's like, YouTube. I, I used to watch Casey Neistat a lot. And I remember like the beginning of that. And I'm like, yo, like, look into the founder's story. Phenomenal story, Q. I think you'd really enjoy it. I'll stop here so okay. we don't give my man too much pub, but it's it's still a really dope, like, Patreon. you know, racks to riches kind of, of thing. Yeah. <laughs> but I really dove it. No, but Q, man, this has been awesome, bro. I know we uh right at that hour mark. If you don't mind, this will be my last piece. Uh, you shared this with us on the Facebook side. I would love if you share it on this platform. Uh, you yeah. talked about one of your biggest lessons uh, from interviewing a great, you know, he's a kid out of Brooklyn. And, you know, you talked about that story. If you could just share that right here, give even the abbreviated oh, version if you must. Which, Love it. Which story? Which With Jay. Oh, oh, my goodness. Man, man, man. Are we talking about... Audio. First time oh, you interviewed him or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> that joint had me. Yeah. Okay. So... Kids, the year was 2001, um, <laughs> and I had to come up to New York to interview Jay-Z and um, R. Kelly, and I'm killing the interview, man. I'm like, I'm killing the interview, and i never forget, it was like a little small dad tape, and it was, you know, it was in a hotel, I think it was in a Waldorf story, and I, I go in, they have a press conference, and it was for, um, for uh, what was that, Best of Both Worlds, and you know, you can see, you can hear how like we're in one hotel room. You can hear how the energy in the other room is going, and it wasn't going. And you know, eh, hmm, hmm, hmm. people start asking like the same kind of questions. So I come in and I do the interview. I got to send y'all this picture too for for this. And I'm interviewing Jay. I had this like furry can go on. I don't know what the heck I was thinking. And I'm killing the interview. Like it's Jr. I'm going back and forth, killing the interview, and. He was like, yo, man, you did your thing, man. Like, they laughing. It was cool. We take a picture. And I stop, and I'm like, I'm I'm listening. I'm trying to listen to the joint, and I, it's, like, really low. And it, it didn't even record. It was like, it recorded, but, it, like, I had the mic in the wrong input. Just so I was just, it was just bad. And um, that really showed, like, I was, and I, so I came back to Philly. The morning show sent me up there. I came back with nothing. Right. And it was a great interview, but only those people in the room heard it. And it crushed me. It crushed me to the point where I was like, man, I will never let that happen again. I would like I, I made sure that anything I went through throughout my career, I just made sure not not even like it would never happen again. But because it happened again, uh, another artist, but. It didn't have like those are the things I remember about my career the most. All right. I was talking to a kid today. He's about to interview Stephen A. Smith. And I was just telling him, you know, some of my stories. And I was like, dude, when you're interviewing people, listen. 
I want you to listen. I'll never forget another story. DMX I interviewed him in 2003. I listened to that tape the other day, found the tape, had a converter, and I missed what he said. He wanted to tell me something, but I was so caught on what I wanted to say next and me being nervous and caught up in the moment and whatever. And I missed it. So those are the things I remember about my career to make me better. It's the things that where I got defeated or I didn't record something or I missed. I still want to know what DMX wanted to tell me. That was in 2003. I still look, sometimes I look back at that picture. I'm going to send y'all the picture. I'm going to take a picture on my phone. I'm going to send y'all the picture of me with R. Kelly and Jay and they're laughing and like I'm, I'm killing it. You see Wayne Wonder, he's a DJ from Chicago, producer, worked at Jive. Um, he's laughing in the background, and I'm like, yo, I don't even remember what I was saying to him. And those are the things I will remember. I'll, I'll, I don't think about the thousands of interviews that went well. I think about those four or five that were just like bad, or I had a lesson to learn from those. So, um, yeah, you it's it's a lot to learn from your mistakes, guys. A lot to cuz you me, I like not losing more than I like winning. Like I want to I don't want to lose. Winning is cool cuz what a win does for me is like where's the next win? I just want to win. Losing? Oh my god. I don't want to lose, bro. I don't want to lose. We just talked like, about this move. We just talked about that. Yeah, legit. Yeah. <laughs> cuz y'all know Y'all know I had to get my camera right because last time I was on here, I'm like, uh, my camera wasn't right. We, I'm like, I'm here's the same issues again. What the hell? I was so oh, sorry. I'm like, uh, like <laughs> I was losing it. Bad, and, hell, hell is not a bad word. I'm sorry. I just, you know, I, you know <laughs> any, anytime I gotta tell y'all, anytime I talk to any ETA family, I, I, I act as if I'm talking to ET. So I, I you know, yeah, even I just won't that. be. I just yeah. just how yeah, you know. But Respect. Um, Respect. yeah, background was crazy on the last interview. You know, I didn't have this background. I had my lights. I was just really upset. But I, you know, I wanted to make sure that you know we connected. So when y'all told me y'all, you know, Q, we want you. I'm like, all right, bet we'll be ready. So I thank y'all for the time, man. Really, Ooh. I thank you. We enjoyed it. Man. <laughs> There was so much more I wanted to ask, and then I'm oh, like, mm, oh, no, it's, it's, we oh, gotta go, okay. we gotta go. Right. Uh, <laughs> look, real quick, real quick, um, follow us on social media: Nikki and Moose, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, of course, YouTube. You're watching this on YouTube, um, and you have to follow Q. But I'm gonna let him tell you everything. With that, we do go live Tuesdays now at 8 p.m., right, Moose? Yep, Moose? yep, 8 p.m. Okay. Eastern. Yep. 8 p.m. Eastern, Tuesday at Facebook.com slash Nikki and Moose. We are there. But Q, uh, end us with some final words. Well, where can they find you? And then kind of final words. Um, everything Quincy Harris at Quincy Harris on Instagram. I put a lot of stuff on there. Um, I'm expanding from there. So you'll see like the link tree in my bio soon. So at Quincy Harris on Instagram and you check out the FAQ podcast. Um, look out for, you know, more projects coming, community coming. And, um, yeah, I would just say, uh, again, when you want something, just think about how it sounds to the other person. Like I, I get a lot of DMs sometimes and it's like, Hey man, I like your stuff. I want to use you. That's how it sounds, right? <laughs> hey, man. Look, I want to use you. I love what's going on. I love what you're doing. I want to use you. And, and I think we, like, just lead with trying to add value to people, man. Like, just try to add value. Um, be on time. Um, be humble. Um, and it, it, it'll, it'll take you far. And learn. Always learn. Always look to learn, man. We have to learn. Um don't try to be the smartest person in the room. Like you always hear that, but don't try to be the smartest person in the room and don't act like you know everything because you don't. That's it. <laughs>